Alan Grayson has turned himself into quite the scholar of impeachment. He comes on to uh, bring us up to date on where we're at with the whole process. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. On the line with us is Congressman Alan Grayson, former U.S. Congressman from the 9th District of Florida, the author of a new book, High Crimes, The Impeachment of Donald Trump. Uh, his, uh, uh, his book is available you know, wherever books are available. And uh, Congressman Grayson, welcome back to the program, first off. Thanks. It's available at impeachbook.com. Thank impeachbook you, Impeachbook.com. Thank you very much. Right. Um, so the... The uh, this, this whole impeachment process of Donald Trump, I, it, we've been kind of out of the loop for a week or so. And, and um, bring us up to date on exactly where it's at. I was hearing reports this morning, a few hours ago, before I went on the air, uh, that some Republicans were suggesting that Mitch McConnell could go ahead and hold his trial without ever receiving the articles of impeachment from, um, from Nancy Pelosi. Uh, I don't know if that's a possibility. What's the current state of events? Uh, the House has voted for to impeach Donald Trump. Uh, they are going to put together a resolution that will identify the impeachment managers uh, to run the impeachment of the Senate, and then the Senate will have a trial. That's where we are now. Anything else is fantasy. Okay. Great. So, uh, and 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 you know, obviously, the, you've got. Uh, Mitch McConnell saying he doesn't want to have any witnesses. He's going to have a fast trial. Basically, the thing is rigged. Uh, you've got Lisa Murkowski saying, well, wait a minute. You know, I might want to hear from a witness. And then, of course, Susan Collins playing both sides, as she always does. You know, oh, I'm very concerned. Uh, maybe we should have witnesses. Well, I don't think we need witnesses. You know, whatever. Uh, where's that? How does that play out? Well, it plays out fundamentally differently from where people appear to think it plays out, and that includes the leadership of both parties. Uh, basically, what happened in the House is a grand jury vote, as if it were in a criminal case. What happens in the Senate is a, a jury decision. When's the last time you trial. saw a criminal trial, a jury trial? When is the last time you saw a jury trial without witnesses? It doesn't happen. That's not the way things work, especially in a criminal case uh, or a quasi-criminal case. Now, the, so, but the Republicans what, are asserting that the Clinton impeachment trial did not have witnesses. Is that simply a lie or... Or it, go ahead. That was by agreement of all 100 senators unanimously. You'd never have an agreement like that today. The right. normal procedure, if you look at it historically, which the book does, it looks at all of the impeachments in the federal system, all the impeachments of governors, and so on and so forth. If you look at it historically, what happens next is that after the impeachment managers are appointed, they call witnesses, just like a prosecutor would in a criminal case. Right. And then uh, if there's an objection to that witness, then the chief justice will rule whether the witness's testimony would be relevant or irrelevant. And then any senator can appeal the ruling, and then there'll be some kind of vote on it if some senator appeals. But think about how that looks if the House impeachment managers call someone as a witness, and then the chief justice rules in their favor that the witness's testimony would be relevant. And, and then Mitch McConnell tries to stuff everybody on a 51 to 49 or 52 to 48 vote, and, and and try to cut that off. That clearly looks like obstruction of justice on Mitch McConnell's part. Hmm. Now, just I, I would like to put the the Clinton argument to bed because it, I hear it repeated uh, every day on right wing talk radio. Um, the reason why the, all 100 senators agreed that there was no need to hear from any more witnesses in the Bill Clinton impeachment was because Bill Clinton himself had already testified. Um, other, many, many other people had come forward. Ken Starr had spent $74 million, if I'm remembering correctly, and, and th three or four years investigating the Clintons for a whole variety of things that ended up with the Paula Jones trial that led to Monica Lewinsky and that led to his line about having consensual sex with another adult, and, you know, out of, outside of his marriage, which, you know, happens. Um, and I think everybody felt, and then Ken Starr had came out with that pornographic report that was tens of thousands of pages long, or thousands of pages long, um, that we were just like drenched in testimony. And, uh, you know, I remember NPR uh, reporting on it at the time, you know, driving down the street listening to NPR, where the reporters were having to say, and, and if, please forgive us for using this word, and then they would, you know, use the word penis or something like that, and, you know, quoting Ken Starr. And, the, and, and it, was, it was such a challenge. I mean, that 
that's the exact opposite of what is happening here, where there has been no grand jury, there has been no testimony by the president, there has been no testimony by any of the people close to him or anybody around him, um, and there has been no special prosecutor, and the House of Representatives has been trying to do this by themselves, and they've been completely stonewalled. Do I have that right? Yes, entirely right. And in Ken Starr's case, he accomplished something that people didn't even think was possible. He managed to make pornography boring. Right. Uh, but as to where we are right now, that's entirely correct. What ought to happen is the House managers ought to call a certain number of witnesses to prove their case, just as you would a criminal trial. And I think they ought to call Donald Trump. I think they should call Donald Trump as a witness. And if he wants to plead the fifth, that is fine with me. Now, I'm watching Joe Biden do a, a delicate dance with this, and I can just imagine um, either his internal dialogue or his, um, uh, you know, con consultants or handlers or whatever the appropriate word is for somebody running for president um, uh, talking with him. Um, Trump says, I want Joe Biden to testify, and, 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 and Joe immediately is like, wait a minute, you're trying to make this trial about me. Well, of course, the whole thing has been about him. Uh, it's really about Trump, obviously, but, you know, it's about Trump's attempts to smear Joe Biden in advance of the election. And so he's thinking, well, harump, you know, I'm not going to play into that. And then and then the Republicans start saying, well, Joe Biden says he doesn't have to testify. If he doesn't have to testify, then why should Mick Mulvaney have to testify? And at which point Joe Biden starts saying, well, maybe I would testify if I was subpoenaed. Um, you know, in other words, I, I would honor a subpoena. Uh, this has got to be a really, really tricky one. And, and I would think if Joe Biden testified, if it's true, and I'm perfectly willing to believe that it is. In fact, I fully believe that it is that he not only had nothing to do with his son getting that job, but probably knew nothing about it until well after the fact, because he had put this firewall between himself and his kids, which I think was a mistake, but nonetheless. Um, then probably his testimony would actually be a good thing for Joe Biden. But, but anyhow, what, what are your thoughts on both the, the legalism of this as an attorney and an author and the politics of this as a former member of Congress? Well, he clearly made the wrong decision here. First of all, it's not voluntary. What would happen in reality is that President Trump's attorneys, he's entitled to representation of the Senate hearing. His attorneys would call Joe Biden as a witness. And then the chief justice would make a ruling one way or another, whether Biden's testimony is relevant or not. Probably would rule that it's irrelevant, but you can't be sure of that. Okay. And then one senator would be able to appeal that ruling. And then there'd be a vote on it as to whether Joe Biden would be required to testify. And if he, the vote is against Biden, he would have to testify whether he likes it or not. There, there's a police force that exists for the Senate that exists for the purpose, among other things, of making sure that people who are called to testify with the Senate actually do testify before the Senate. So what he should have done, Tom, what he should have done is said, I'll testify if Donald Trump will testify. Right. And that would have been the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Good point. So how, what do you expect to be happening over the next week or two here? I know that there's a court case. I believe it's going to be decided tomorrow about whether Don McGahn should testify. Um, that's testify to the House, as I recall. Um, where is all this going? Or, or was that in a lawsuit? Well, the House can continue uh, with with this impeachment proceeding and also with other impeachment proceedings. My, my goodness, I mean, Donald Trump is a walking, talking, impeachable offense. Right. Uh, and, he, you know, he's guilty of, of so many other forms of abuse of power, so many other forms of obstruction of justice. He's guilty of tax evasion. He's guilty of sexual crimes. He's guilty of this, that, and the other thing. Uh, the book in, demonstrates that of the nine different things that people have been impeached for in the past, Donald Trump is guilty of all of them. It, mm. It's a remarkable accomplishment for any human being. But in it, to, to answer your question, the House can continue to collect information on this impeachment proceeding and on other impeachment proceedings, and I think that they should do that. You know, for instance, everybody knows he's been cheating on his taxes. The New York Times wrote a 15,000-word article on it one week uh, to document it all. Uh, and, and, of course, he's gone out of his way to prevent any release of his tax information, both before, during, and after the campaign. So what they ought to do is get the appropriate documentation and set that in motion as well. People don't realize this, but one of the impeachment uh, provisions against Nixon, uh, which they decided not to proceed with, but they actually had written it up and introduced it, was to show that Nixon had uh, underpaid his taxes by $400,000. Well, Donald Trump has probably underpaid his taxes by $400 million. Mm. 